Jacques realized that after two years of medical school, he had not found his passion. So he courageously left Tulane University and enrolled in Notre Dame's School of Architecture. Following his true passion has led to his work being awarded by the Institute of Classical Art and Architecture. Hello, my name is Dwight Rhodes. Welcome to Design Art Seminars and Roads to Equity's Emerging Professional Series, where we discuss why young professionals chose architecture and design and how they are reimagining our built environment so our diverse society can not only live together, but thrive together. Our guest today is Jacques Levey. Stay with us for the next 10 minutes and hear him share his story. My name is Jacques Levey. Um, I am currently working um, for a firm called Historical Concepts in Atlanta. I've been working here about two and a half to three years now. Uh, so, you know, still fairly new in the career. So my background is initially actually in biomedical engineering. Um, went to undergrad, got my uh, undergrad degree in that. Um, did a lot of research, uh, you know, work, um, worked in the hospitals. Then I went on to medical school for two years um, before I finally decided to make the change and go into the architecture field. Um, and at that point is when I went to uh, Notre Dame to get my graduate degree in architecture. What was your thinking to go from biomedical engineering into architecture? Um, you know, I always had an interest in architecture, um, uh, architecture and design in general. I decided to go to that route um, mostly because the the design field where I was was not exactly uh, on my particular interests. Um, it was a little more theoretical, and the mentors that I had were trying to get me um, into it, but just it honestly wasn't connecting. Um, and as an undergrad with you know, many different interests, I also enjoyed biomedical engineering um, and loved the courses, loved the math and the design related with that. Uh, I was also in, into your product design for it, so you can kind of see the connection there. And one thing led to another. <laughs> So you mentioned mentors, and, and that, I think, is really important because when you look at the research in terms of of not only going into the field of architecture and design, but staying in it, what's really important based on data is having a mentor that's there to sort of support you. Can you talk oh, a little more about the mentors who were in your life or who are in your life? I started becoming involved in some of the... Um, architecture and historic preservation groups uh, in New Orleans. And so that's how I started meeting you know, other professionals and you know, getting a couple of mentors. And the, to me, the best mentor is someone who, even if their particular interests aren't yours, they can still help guide you and open you up to new things. And so actually one of my biggest mentors was a lady who was interested in architecture, but she was actually in um, magazines. Uh, she was a, a writer and through her, she introduced me to a lot of people and helped guide me towards Notre Dame um, for my architecture degree. You know, you went into biomedical engineering, but did you feel as if there was something else Latent that you needed to explore, or that just really didn't begin to surface until undergraduate school. Um, so you, you are correct. There definitely was uh, an interest in in architecture, um, but I honestly did not know the particulars of that interest. Mm. Uh, it was more of a general interest in um, in cities and in design in general. Um, you know, photography and history and um, everything that comes with, you know, the built environment. So it was actually, it was fairly difficult for me to pinpoint and say, you know, this is it. I want to be an architect to design n new structures, you know, improve the built environment um, with modern works. So that's, to me, it was a big step. and really 
getting more involved through some of these local organizations and seeing different opportunities and different professions is really the way that helped me kind of focus in on that and realize that that's truly what I wanted to do. What exactly does a day in the life of Jacques look like um, in terms of the work that you do? Yeah, certainly. Um, so I am part of a team of um, four to five um, people. Um, a fourth of the day is a lot of discussions you know, with the team, a lot of sketching. We draw a lot. Um, we also do a lot of computer work, so translating those very basic you know, sketch ideas into something a little more concrete. Um, we also spend a lot of time with our clients. We're a highly residential firm, so talking with our clients is extremely important. Um, and it's actually one of my favorite parts of the jobs, interacting with the clients and finding out what you know gets them excited and translating you know their dreams in, into reality. It's a lot of a lot of teamwork um, to make ideas you know turn into a, a built structure. Who's a part of that team? Who's a part of that conversation when we start to talk about built environments in different communities? And I'm wondering how then does the team or you translate that into something that is representative of the community that the community where that residence might be placed? So we talk with clients and show them what a true complete neighborhood is, you know, one that involves a you know, mix of income, uh, this a diversity uh, of people in general um, is showing the positive benefits of a d- diverse neighborhood, and that's not just you know in, in types of people. That's extremely important. Is building types, um, types of construction, diversity in all realms, really. Because I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing here in the city as it relates to the work that you're doing? Um, We're seeing an increased interest in dense, walkable neighborhoods. Mm. And for historical reasons, many of the areas in the city that are dense um, and walkable um, have changed greatly over the years. And so within the past, um, I'm fairly new to Atlanta, but I'm just thinking 10 years or so, we're seeing influx of people who want to live in these neighborhoods. The attraction is that true sense of neighborhood and walkability. And if those types of developments are constructed elsewhere, it would give people an option Hmm. um, to to live in these newly created neighborhoods. Like um, when I look at um, the problems of gentrification, what, what I see is, a renewal in the ideas of walkability um, and dense neighborhoods. I'm wondering, what is it that truly excites you about the work that you do? Being able to participate in not just creating a building, but creating a true home. And that's not just in the single residence, that's the whole neighborhood. That's what really excites me, um, to create a place that someone can have a real and permanent connection to. What, what advice would you have for the 17-year-old Jock um, that you would give to him today? I think probably the biggest advice would honestly be to follow what you're interested in. And if one person kind of turns you away from that, don't think that that's your only option. Really follow your interests. Um, talk to a lot of people. Get involved in organizations to have discussions with people and just get out there and see things. The getting involved um, is really you know, the first step. And once you do that, people will see you and want to help you 
Jacques, I know this has been a really quick conversation, but I want to say thank you for making the time. And I know it's a very busy schedule. Great. Well, thank you much, Dwight.